Today we will be discussing the process and application of 3D printing. Our group produced an air intake manifold for the University of Georgia's FSAE race car. Like any 3D printing project, we began with constructing a model in a 3D design program. We chose to work with SolidWorks. Our design was built around the FSAE 2019 rulebook, and our constraints were a product of such rules. To account for lack of time and lack of funds, 3D printing was our best option when it came to producing a manifold. After design, we ran the intake through simulations to make sure we had created something that worked and performed well enough for the system it was going to be a part of. During the simulation, you can see one valve opens while another closes, changing the pressure within the tank, which can be seen by the changing of blue lines to red. As for printing, we used a PLA composite and this took longer than more common prints due to the size of our design. First we printed a Venturi restrictor that cylindrical angles are to ease airflow into the plenum restrictor, which we printed next. The second restrictor is sized so it can allow a volume of about 7 liters. Three days later. To begin finishing, we remove the support structures within and around the printed parts to create a smooth surface within the restrictor. We manually sanded and machined around the inner bowls. We also heat treated the print to smooth the surface for better airflow. Consequently, this also helps reduce internal stress. Applying epoxy is one of the last steps before assembly. This creates a smooth finish for better airflow and also subsequently increases the strength of the material. We ran tests to check for air leaks. Initially, we tested with a pressure of 20 PSI, and we experienced air leaks at the gasket junction. We solved this by purchasing a better gasket sealer and another gasket. In the next vacuum tests, we managed to get a mass flow rate of about 0 0.032 kilograms per second per vacuum hose, so about 0 0.064 kilograms per second through the entire restrictor. We noticed no air leaks from this test, which makes us feel very confident about the piece moving forward in the car. Finally, we assembled the pieces with a gasket, gasket sealant, nuts, and bolts. The result was quite satisfying. A couple things we learned. We need to eliminate sharp corners and create fillets to reduce stress concentrations. 3D parts could be made with pre-designed holes to lessen risks of leaks from drilling. 
Moving forward, we should give the parts some heat shielding, but this depends on the parts position on the car, relative to the engine. And we also need to provide a larger region for the assembly holes to prevent cracking. Hopefully these adjustments will lead to a successful built car for FSAE. Thanks again for watching.